Hi everyone, welcome back to DIY DevOps. Today, I've got something pretty cool to share. I'm building a Kubernetes workshop setup that's actually running inside another Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, it's super useful and totally doable. We'll be using some awesome tools like Kubevirt, Multus, and HAProxy to make it all happen. First, let's look at the big picture. I've got my main Kubernetes cluster, let's call it uh, the infrastructure cluster. And inside that cluster, I'm creating virtual machines using KubeViewed. Those VMs will become nodes of another completely separate Kubernetes cluster. And this is what I will call the tenant cluster. It's a perfect setup for training session, workshops, or even just experimenting without needing more physical hardware. Let's talk a bit more about KubeVirt because it's seriously cool. It lets you run real virtual machines right inside your Kubernetes cluster alongside your container workloads. So instead of managing a separate virtualization platform like VMware or Proxmox, you get to treat VMs as native Kubernetes resource. That makes them easy to deploy, scale, manage using the same tools and workflows you already know from using your containers. With KubeVirt, you use YAML manifest to define everything about your VMs, just like the regular containers, the CPU cores, memory, storage, network interfaces, and even what operating system to boot. You can run Linux, you can run Windows if you want to. To keep things simple and scalable, I'm using something called virtual machine pools, which work similar to Kubernetes deployments. I just create one template for my VMs and then just specify how many I want. Kubernetes takes care of the rest, placing VMs evenly across all the physical nodes. KubeVirt also makes handling networking and storage super straightforward. For storage, I set up a data volume that downloads a Debian image from the internet and stores it as a persistent volume claim. Once that image is downloaded and stored, every VM I create using KubeVirt simply clones that PVC. This makes launching new VMs incredibly fast since they don't need to pull and download anything again. They're just using a local clone of already prepared volume. As you can see on the screen, the YAM definition is pretty easy to do. I'm just specifying the source of that image, which is the Debian 12 image disk. And I'm specifying that I want to use this volume in a block mode. So there are no files. The PVC is directly treated as a virtual disk for my VM. Keep in mind, by default, data volume will create PVC with read-write many access modes, and you want this access mode in order to be able to live migrate the VM between different nodes. If you set read-write once, it won't be possible to live migrate the VM. Ask me how I know that. Before diving into KubeVirt networking, I had to prepare the underlying network configuration on my physical servers. I bonded two physical interfaces using LACP for better throughput and redundancy. So go watch video about that, link in the corner, and then created a VLAN aware bridge on top of the bond. So as you can see on this configuration, it's pretty easy, pretty standard. If you ever used Proxmox before, it's basically the same. I'm just specifying bridge ports on the bridge interface itself, I am specifying IP address for the infrastructure Kubernetes nodes. This setup ensures that the bridge is VLAN aware and allows KubeVirt to attach VMs to specific VLANs using Multus. Then in Kubernetes, I set up custom network attachment definition to allow Multus to connect each VMs to my server's VLAN on my physical network. This involves referencing the bridge interface I created above and configuring the IP range with whereabouts. And there's the configuration I've used. This definition lets me access my VMs from my IP range and access them from my LAN with a bridge interface that connects to server's VLAN on my physical switch. By attaching this network to my VMs via Multus, they become first-class citizens of the network, accessible just like any physical machine. Speaking of Multus, it's another essential piece here uh, usually Kubernetes pods come with only one network interface and it's network interface that connects Kubernetes pods with Kubernetes internal network provided by your CNI. But sometimes, especially for virtual machines, that's just not enough. Multos solves that problem by letting pods or VMs have multiple network interfaces. In my setup, I'm using Multus to connect the VMs directly to my home lab network that makes them behave 
just like regular servers on mainland, easy to reach, manage, integrate into any existing home lab infrastructure. Multos has many other features. It can use bridges, it can use Mac VLANs, IP VLANs, and other types of networks if you want to. But most, most importantly, it allows to connect your Kubernetes spots into physical network, and that's the main point of it. There is one caveat though, because Multos doesn't give me possibility to assign IP addresses by itself, I need another software to do this. I might use static IP addresses, but this is not possible with virtual machine pool scenario, where I define multiple servers at once. So another option would be to just use DHCP server. Unfortunately, this is not directly connected L2 network, so I am not able to use the HTTP servers. Yes, I've tried. That is possible by installing yet another software, which will relay the HTTP request and stuff like that. But for this simple setup, I've just used a whereabouts uh, plugin. It's a simple but powerful plugin that gives out IP addresses from a set range without need for external DHCP server. It tracks everything directly within Kubernetes, making IP management super clear and easy. Unfortunately, I found few issues with whereabouts, especially after stopping and starting virtual machine. It doesn't preserve its IP address for some reason. I have to still debug this. But for the training purposes, when I just have Kubernetes cluster running like for the few days, I just can live with that and I will fix this another day. Okay, so I have network, I have storage, I have virtual machines for my Kubernetes cluster. I can start installing Kubernetes control plane and then the nodes. But how do users actually reach the tenant Kubernetes cluster? This is where HAProxy comes into play. It's an efficient and reliable TCP load balancer, great for directing traffic based on domains and ports. So here's how it works in my setup. Traffic to the API domain goes straight to the Kubernetes API working on Kubemaster servers, and traffic on application domain uh, on ports 80 and 443 goes directly to the ingress controller running inside the worker nodes of that tenant cluster. Very easy. Okay, let's see how this really works in action. First of all, we have this virtual machine object. Let's look at this. As you can see, I have three Kubernetes masters and four Kubernetes nodes to run training workloads. But all of those were created from another object, or to be specific, two objects called virtual machine pool. And all of those were created by me. They are nearly identical. The difference is just the name and the size of the instance. It's slightly bigger for the nodes themselves. Another thing we should look into is how the installation setup is provided. The initial Boot up configuration and setup is taken from the cloud init. But the cloud init configuration doesn't live here, it lives in a secret. So I created a bash script and uploaded this to Kubernetes into a secret. All that the secret does is just adding my SSH key, uh, setting up locally, setting a network DNS, because there is some problem with Multus at the moment, need to fix that later and all the instructions how to actually configure Kubernetes. All of that was uploaded as a secret and is executed by the cloud init at the boot up of the instance. Works perfectly great. Just like any other cloud provider, AWS, GCP, Azure, Hetzner, Cloud, whatnot, you have user data to specify and you can use it also with the kubevirt. So that works great for any automatic creation of virtual machines. More things to mention here is that since any container inside Kubernetes is a pod. What we have here is when we create a virtual machine, this virtual machine object is not necessarily virtual machine itself. This virtual machine object creates a pod with virtual machine, or to be specific with a Quimo instance that runs your virtual machine. So if you wanna run Linux uh, using your favorite Linux distributions, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, Red Hat, whatnot, it works. If you want to run Windows, it also works. You can use all the documentation on kubevirt, how to run and properly configure virtual machines for the Windows. Of course, I can very easily scale them up and scale them down if I want to, just using regular scale commands in the Kubernetes. So if I run scale dash dash replicas equals five, or let's say six, and change the VM pool slash cube node, it will scale my VM instances, 
and because of that it will also create a pod. It won't at this moment because I have starting VMs set to manual, so I manually have to run command to actually start the VM. I have a kubevirt extension in installed for my kubectl, but I can run kube node number four manually and I can list all the pods right there. And as you can see, it's starting at the moment. And since we are talking also about networking, as you can see, I also have my IPs running regularly in my VLAN. And we can confirm this by just running kubectl get downloads, in which you can see that my regular infrastructure cluster has the same IP net block as my another cluster which runs in the same VLAN, technically speaking. Yeah, I know workshop cluster should be in yet another VLAN. That's something for future me to fix. And yeah, I can access this cluster. Let's change the kubectl config to use this cluster. And when I run kubectl get nodes dash a wide, as you can see, now I can see all the nodes that I provisioned within those VMs. All right, that's the full rundown. If you're interested in building flexible, scalable Kubernetes setups for your home lab or trainings or regular production setup, because yes, you can use this in production setup if you need to use VMs, you're in the right place. I would love to hear your thoughts, experiences, or any questions you might have, just drop them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to watch video when I was creating a faster network for my home lab.